Hmm. Hi, with Julian on the brown note, trying to catch up on everything and a review of Day Shift, which is, uh, I guess, whether or not this um, Netflix film is worth your time. It's a vampire film, but it should have been a zombie film, starring Jamie Foxx as someone that is part of a cabal of vampire hunters even though the mythology of the vampire world and what they do is scant uh, it's not really defined like you would normally get in a vampire film so he is um, a deadbeat dad even though he's not really uh, he's got an estranged partner because he lies all the time and he lies all the time because he spends his day pretending to be a pool cleaner in LA but he's really out hunting vampires so she's going to leave him and move to Florida, taking their daughter that they share the custody of. And he needs to get money together to pay her school fees. It's, um, it's pretty surface level noise. And he tries to go back to the Union of Vampire Hunters to get some quick money so he can pay the daughter's school fees so that the what his estranged wife and daughter won't move to Florida and he won't see them again and at the start of the film in uh, just the opening action sequence which denotes the fact that most of the action sequences uh, veer into going too long and too repetitively although it is actually very well done he fights this old lady we later find out that that is the daughter due to her not being turned into a vampire until later in life of the Natasha Leo Bordizzo character called no not Natasha Louis uh, okay Carla Souza Carla Souza uh, as a vampire no oh yeah that is the one um it's her daughter that he kills at the start so she sets off on a vendetta to kill his family that's it um it's <laughs> They must have written it down on a napkin. It's such a small plot. I think the big the, there are two problems I have with this. One is if it it it's done like a, a zombie film, so vampires come charging in their hundreds and are off very quickly. This is this is zombie film territory. It's not vampire territory. I don't know why they didn't make it a zombie film. Um, you know, maybe make one of the head zombie sentient or something but it's it's never a good look that all these vampires are supposed to be so powerful compared to humans but virtually no humans die at the hands of vampires they all manage to dispatch hundreds of them and the other thing is i like my vampires done well you look at something like underworld like the mythos the backstory their society and hierarchy and relationship with the human world is vastly well defined none of that is here we get some semblance that she is maybe trying to um take over the world but it's just not defined and uh, i really didn't like that they don't really bother doing anything with the characters uh with the wider scenario at all and even the vampire hunter world don't expect blade going into this um overall though it's it's very colorful it's very daylight and colorful which a lot of these films can be shot in the darkness uh obviously day shift um so it looks pretty good it's got snoop dog um cowboy snoop dog's one of the vampire hunters as well and uh, Carla Sousa I thought was really good. I didn't think anyone else was, apart from Dave Franco. I like Dave Franco, Jane Franco's brother in films, um, the disaster artist. But I thought his character was good. His character story arc was pretty decent and probably the most entertaining thing. Uh, and no one else really was. Um, Scott Adkins turns up in this, and I don't quite remember seeing him. How bizarre. Um, it's it's a film where I enjoyed it in 10 minute chunks and then 10 minutes I didn't, 10 minutes I did. It's very spotty. Um, some of the uh, action sequences 
are just too repetitive in the manner they're shot. Uh, the director is a first-time director called J.J. Perry, who I believe is an ex-stuntman and martial artist. Yeah, uh, which, uh, like, the, there's repetitious um, styles of fighting used throughout the action sequences, which I got over a bit. Spinny kicks. Um, it's... Snoop's been better used in other films, to be honest. Um... It's uh, it's intermittently enjoyable. I thought that they had a decent enough actress as the protagonist, so I thought that or antagonist, so they could have used her more. They could have done this whole sort of it almost dips its toe into Chinatown sort of territory, but they just don't define any of the universe of vampires live in, uh, which is a missed opportunity. So it is a remarkably slight endeavour. And is it worth watching? Um, I would say overall, I enjoyed the chatty bits, particularly with Dave Franco. Ja <laughs> Did I call Jamie Fox? I wonder if I called him James Franco earlier. Uh, Jamie Fox is actually a decent character here. He carries the movie mostly because he is the uh, curmudgeonly guy with the new partner and they become best friends. And this film does have a nice twist on that. Um, but he's actually a, a much more decent guy when he's with his family. So he's actually got a fairly broadly defined character. It's about the only defined thing in this whole film. Um, and he does carry the whole endeavour. Um, his buddy relationship with Dave Franco is actually pretty decent. I enjoyed the downtime where people are talking to each other more than I enjoyed the action. And... Like I said, you know, I'd go through a period of uh, actually not enjoying it and then a period of enjoying it. So I'd say just a watch, Day Shift. Uh, it's certainly better than the James Franco film. Uh, the James Franco. The Jamie Foxx film I saw two years ago from Netflix and gave an absolute trashing to. And it's called Power Something, but... Um, I always have to look up the name, Project Power, because I always forget it's such a generic name. That was aggressively bad at times. Uh, this isn't. This is just, uh, it just sort of gets a bit dull. Um, so overall, probably a 6 out of 10 for Day Shift. Uh, it will just about get you there. It's intermittently funny. Again, it doesn't always work on the humour level. But yeah, 6 out of 10 for Day Shift.